No Prisoners podcast. We're here with Brigitte Rogers in the home of um, Wollstone Home Architecture and Design. Um, not at 86 West this week, unfortunately. Someone <laughs> passed away. Yeah, someone was more important than us. Someone was more important than us, and they needed the, the place for oh, a funeral. For, oh, they did? I didn't know that. Yeah, that was a even. real thing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> then I take everything I said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're here, um, and we'll remind you, last Wednesday of every month is happy hour in Doylestown. If you don't live nearby here, we're sorry about that. We'll get a couple messages from time to time. We'll be like, when are you going to do something? I'm like, we're not that big of a podcast. We're not coming to your town. <laughs> yeah, we're not coming to your city. Yeah, no. We're not on tour. Yeah, we're not <laughs> on tour. <laughs> yeah. This isn't Kill Tony. We're not, we're not, <laughs> not smart list by any chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, don't, we don't have a travel budget. <laughs> no, the first, I got that message the first time. I was like, you got to be kidding. And the person wasn't. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like, yeah, you never good, know. Good joke, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. It'd be cool. Mm. But we were really excited to sit down with you, not only because of your design talent and you working here and being a cool lady and being that we've hung out a bunch of times now, uh -huh. but there's all, every time somebody finds out that like we know you or someone is in, I don't know, in the circle, they're always like, you got to have Brigitte on. Mm -hmm. Do you oh, know really? about Do you yeah. know about Brigitte? Get that and I lot. said, oh. I said, I don't want to know until she <laughs> sits down. And then you guys started talking at the happy hour, and I mm -hmm. just immediately was just like, I'm gonna forget everything I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So welcome. That was fun. We had fun at the happy hour. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank we you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us. Um, sure. And before we start picking your brain about production stuff that could help us, you know, <laughs> yeah. rise to the top. What, Taking notes here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess like we'll start like at the very beginning. Like where like where are you from originally? Like where'd you grow up? I grew up uh, so originally I was actually I was actually born in New York City, but I was raised in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Fort Lee, New Jersey. Yeah. Did you like? Where did you go to? Did you go to college? Did you? Yeah. So I, I spent one year at CW Post, and then I went to FIT. Okay. What's yeah. FIT? Fashion Institute of Technology. Oh. But they do um, fashion, interior design, more of like a, you know, creative kind of school. So did you, like when you were growing up, did you always know you were like a creative type of person? Were you artsy? Yeah. What was that like? Um, I didn't really hone in on like what my creative was, but I was always entertaining, doing plays, you know, for my family. Um, I loved writing. So creativity was always just part of me. I was who was your like if you could pick any concert in high school yeah. like your your artist like did you have like a favorite band or a favorite you know <laughs> in singer school? in high school so I went to school in the 80s um so yeah I mean Duran Duran like forget okay. about it like ah, you know <laughs> side in the box, you know um U2 was great obviously Madonna Michael Jackson um but like Duran Duran was that was the band did you ever wear a glove on one hand um, or did no. you ever wear gloves in the 80s? Yeah, you know, the lace one. <laughs> yeah, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. You oh, nice. That, yeah. You know, <laughs> like bracelets up to yeah. here. Absolutely. That's good stuff. Um, yeah, no, but and I, and Billy Idol. I loved Billy Idol. Okay. Yeah. So when you, you went to a fashion institute, did you think, like, originally you wanted to get into, like, textiles and, like, clothing? Or did you, I guess, take us through, like, what your interests were that, like, ultimately led to yeah. where you're at? Yeah. Um, well, I just liked being in New York, and I wasn't sure. I didn't know if I wanted to do marketing or – I wasn't really into fashion. I was just into all of the design and creativity around it, you know, like set design. or I, I really wasn't sure at the time. I just went there kind of like, I don't know. This is just a creative environment, and let's see what, what sticks. <laughs> so you, you went there and kind of got introduced to probably like everything. I did, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd say I focused on marketing just because, again, I grew up in the 80s and – like advertising was the cool job to have mm. um and it seemed right up my alley like I enjoyed writing I felt like I was creative I'm like oh this is a really good fit for me but it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be and I didn't really like it because I started working part-time for an um an ad agency yeah yeah and I was just like this isn't really it was market it was business to business marketing and I just I'm not into this. It was more corporate than I thought it was mm, going to be. Okay. Like, that was like the movies, you know? Like, I thought you, like, show up with, like, I have the best idea, you know, like in Mr. Ma when she's like, tuner, schooner, whatever, to, you know? <laughs> yeah. and, like, everyone raves about it, and then you're off on a plane, and you're presenting and doing all these cool creative things, like you know? Like Mad Men? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever yeah. seen Mr. Mom? No, never. You definitely need to go back. You're <laughs> yeah. you're a little bit younger than me, so you might not have gotten that movie, but that movie is amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah. it is. Michael Keaton. Okay. Classic. Yeah, it, like, they... Uh, 
so I forget what the what the problem is, but like basically he loses his job, so yeah. and then his wife like has to get a job, and then she ends up becoming like rising to the top of this company <laughs> while he's like home with the kids. Like yeah, yeah, it's it's a mess, but the whole movie is like it's really cute, interesting. Yeah, but it's a yeah. great movie, yeah. probably one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So you were you were kind of attracted to the not not fictitious but kind of like the glamorous vision that that industry had kind of yeah. sold through like movies and things like that. Yeah. 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 And you know also my boyfriend who was at Post came to New York to be a stockbroker so I was like, "Cool, I'm coming too." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was one of those kind of follow a guy or maybe he followed me, I don't know, but we went together. Okay. We didn't live together, but for we the were sake like, of the story and the and like uh, and our our, our our souls here. He followed you. Yeah, he followed yeah. You. yeah. let's yeah. just yeah, let's yeah. just say that we we write our own history. It's twenty twenty four. I kind of wish he didn't. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's another long story. But yeah. no. right. episode two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, yeah the, the, the 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 romance life of Brigitte Rogers. <laughs> Mistakes by Brigitte. There you go. Um, yeah, no. sex Sex in the City was already taken, or we would have come up with that name naturally. Yeah, because mm. yeah, we're yeah. creatives. Yeah, we're creatives. So we do. Yeah. So. How old were you when you, like, so you changed schools a little bit there. Like, how yeah. old were you when you entered, like, the career world? Young. Yeah. I, so I always worked, um, I was, like, what, 18, 19 in the summer. I was working at Payne Weber, like, a summer job. Um, and that was when email just came out. So I was in charge. Somehow, I don't know why I got this job, but <laughs> somehow I got this job. I was the one in charge of teaching all of the attorneys how to use email. Mm. It was like, you click on inbox, and then you click on new mail, you know? Yeah, and I was yeah. doing all these courses for them. I don't I don't know how I got that job. <laughs> I um, can, like, I can kind of see that interview. It's like you show up for, like, one thing, and they're like, wait, email? And yeah. then just, like, guy likes a cigar and <laughs> picks you up. He's like, go to the other room. They actually, like, it was the uh, IT department. Somehow they, they're, I don't know, I think my friend worked there, and she's like, oh, they're hiring, come for an interview, you know? I'm like, yeah, sure, I could do that. <laughs> yeah, that's probably kind of like with, like, kids nowadays or probably maybe 10 years ago when social media popped up. Every business was probably just hiring whatever, you know, 20-something-year-old kid they could get a hold yeah, of. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. I, I'm... It the was email a little different was back then. the email. I, d- I like. Do you think the email was more impactful than social media was, being that you kind of saw like both things take over in business? Um, because email, like, if you really like you, I th- we all undervalue the importance of what email yeah. did to the world. I think though, social media just I think drives revenue maybe a little bit more, and I think people are able to have a lot more opportunities with social media than with email. Mm. You know. So you I taught you taught the business people how to communicate with one another. Yeah, yeah. And so shortly after that, I was working part-time at the marketing company. And the lady who was my boss, who was the director, kind of just up and quit. And I feel like this is how things were back in the day. I don't know. They were like, well, hey, you're doing this job. Can you do it full-time? And I'm like, well, I'm in school. And they're like, yeah, but you could do it. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I started going to school at night. Yeah. So I'd work, you know, nine to five, and then I'd go to school at night. Um, so you had you had like hustle. Like you, I had hustle. You wanted? To, did you? I was always like, a hustler since I was a kid. Did you just have like strong work ethic from seeing your parents work sh- work, or did you have like some sort of mission you were on? Like, what made you work? Have I don't, that work I don't ethic? know. Yeah. I, I mean, I just always was drawn to people. I mean, we lived in an apartment building, so. I hung out with a doorman. Like my sister always said, you are the weirdest, you're the weirdest <laughs> group of friends. <laughs> I would hang out with the doorman. They'd take me to ice cream, you know, on their breaks. And thank God none of them were pedophiles. But, um, <laughs> you know, I was like, like, hey, I was little girl. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, everything worked out okay. okay. Um, but The I, lights I, dim. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I thought we were going for ice cream. <laughs> like, I go home and I'm like, that wasn't the episode yeah. I was expecting. <laughs> we discovered something. Brigitte's um, tell all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank God, no. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just, I always loved stories and, and talking to people and, and learning about them from a young age. And so I would go and have, you know, ice cream with the doorman and talk to them about their lives and, you know, what they're doing and how they got here. Uh, I, I don't know, it was weird like that. Um, and so we had a guy who ran the clean I- cleaners in our building and I would volunteer to deliver all the cleaners and I'd get paid a tip. And I was like six or seven, you know, eight, whatever. Um I don't know. I just was always like hustling yeah. and I guess talking to people and interested in wanting to do things. Um, school's great. I didn't love school. Um, I found it boring, mm. <laughs> to be honest with you. Mm. I loved history. I loved, you know, law classes, things like that. 
but I always was, you know, kind of ants in my pants at school, and I just found it boring, and I loved just doing and experiencing things, and I feel like I learn the best that way, it's just do it, um, so I think that's probably where, you know, all the work stuff came in. Would you say, like, you're, you're the type of person that just kind of prefers to just act rather than kind of, you know, some people, you know, want to sit back and think about a plan and, until it's like almost like not even a good plan anymore yeah. like you just find Wait yourself as like spontaneous type person yeah. yeah yes but I need a safety net um I mean I, th- I think that's why my husband and I are such a good team because he's such a um a th- like he analyzes he takes time he does the research he's so thorough um and I'm like yeah like sh- let's go you yeah. know um and so we balance each other out because I kind of push him sometimes to just go and do it and don't wait. And then he kind of teaches me to be like, slow your roll a little bit, you know, or have somewhat of a plan. How'd you meet your husband? I thought you were going to (laughs) die. We met on 42nd Street in New York City. (laughs) It's true. Um, We met in a stand-up comedy writing course. Oh, Oh, wow. No way. We did stand-up comedy together. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. That's how we met. (laughs) Did you you do stand-up comedy as just kind of like an outlet, or did you have aspirations to be a comic? Uh, not stand up. I loved improv, mm. Saturday Night Live kind of stuff, skits that I felt was more uh, in my wheelhouse. Um, stand up wasn't. I wasn't as strong in it, and I felt like. I mean, I did it for such a short amount of time, and I would write jokes. I f- I felt that would land, you know, not really writing jokes that I thought were great or that represented me, just like, okay, I think this will be funny and people will laugh at this, so I'm going to write it, mm. um, which doesn't really, you know, you don't last in stand-up comedy if, you're, if that's your mindset, Yeah. Um, but I just did it because I loved comedy and I wanted to do something fun and, you know, I was just like, let's try it. Who's your mm-hmm. favorite comedian or who's your favorite performer um, in that? I mean, George Carlin was by far okay. my Carlin's favorite crazy. comedian. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I love Jim Gaffigan. Um, Seinfeld's so amazing and clever. What um, about from Steve like Wright. the Seinfeld or not the uh, SNL days, like when it was like back oh. in the day, day? Like who do you th- who do you think was like the? I mean, Will Ferrell's amazing. I know he's more current, but he's just like outrageous. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'd say probably Will Ferrell's. He's really really funny. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Fallon was great. I mean, there's so many good ones. Um, Molly Shannon was great. Um, I like Chris Farley. Chris Farley was funny. Yeah. He was, like, physical. They're supposed to come out with an SNL movie. Oh, really? I think I heard that. Are they? Some sort of, like, SNL-backed movie. Mm. I don't know if it's, like, about SNL. No. I'm literally just making things up. (laughs) I mean, that would be cool. Most podcasts are 70% not true. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. We don't fact check here. We do zero fact checking. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever the guests come on and claim. Yeah. The, the guy followed yeah, her to New York. Hey That's man. what happened. Yeah, yeah. He followed See, me. Once, in, it's, you know. once it's into the <laughs> No Prisoners podcast, you know, t- atmosphere, it's yeah. truth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you met your husband in New York then? Yeah. At a comedy writing course. Yeah, which is, is you is know. Is he a funny guy? Oh, he's so funny. He's a funny guy. I think that's, yeah, why, guy. Uh, I think that's why we're married so long because we – we laugh so much. And even, you know, if we get into, like, a stupid fight, one of us will just make fun of something about it or, yeah. w- or each other, and then we just crack up and it's over, you know? Do you think th- – how long have you been married? 21 years. How do you think that laughter or, like, being able to joke and not take you guys each other too seriously is the secret or – Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, y- you have to laugh. Yeah, I mean, I'll be – if I'm – whatever, being maybe a bitch. <laughs> Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, you know, he'll to. like. Yeah do something or imitate me and then I'll start laughing. I'll be like, all right, sorry, I'm being a jerk, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Cause it, I mean, you kind of have to, or I'll, you know, or if he gets mad and then reacts and now we're in a fight, but if you just kind of make fun of me and act like I'm acting and then I see it and then I'm <laughs> being an idiot. Um, yeah. It just makes it better. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Makes like it easier. Li- let the other person kind of just lit it out without, um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously judgment. there's a line, there's a limit. I mean, you know, we, our arguments like everybody yeah, you're else not, like punching him in the face or anything no 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 no, no. Wink, um wink. that was the guy <laughs> who followed me no yeah we've actually been married twice he was First not time. a comic <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> was a stock worker so <laughs> yeah i'm funny about that yeah. he was uh <laughs> he let's just say he talked real fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's um, leave it at that um <laughs> So what, like, the the thing that people bring up to me the most about you mm-hmm. is your time with, um, I guess, the NFL or the NFL Network. I'm not sure. NFL Films. 
NFL films because I know there's like a bunch of different areas there. When when did you start getting into like the production film world, and then how did you end up in a place like that? So I had, um, well, I was working doing the marketing, going to school at night, and then I ended up leaving there, calling off my engagement. <laughs> Oh, going to Hawaii. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> give me some shotguns. Yeah, going person. to Hawaii and just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> um, I went to Hawaii and I was like, yeah, Hawaii is cool. Let's hang out in Hawaii. Mm. <laughs> um, maybe we live here. So I started looking for jobs and I was like, all right, you know, let's just kind of put life on hold and see what happens in Hawaii. Um, and then I was like, okay, here's what's happening in Hawaii. I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii was great, but now I need money. And at, I had met someone, a recruiter, in, in, I guess in passing, or we had met before, and he called me and said, um, I have a job, and I think you'd be perfect for it. It's for one of the largest uh, production companies in New York City. Um, what, will you come for an interview? And I'm like, yeah, I'm in Hawaii, but I'll be back. I'll come. So I went on the interview, and I got hired um, just as an assistant to the vice president, but, you know, one of those things where, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? And then one, you know, your role is evolving, and now all of a sudden you're helping with production and you're on set, and it kind of, you know, evolved into that. Do you um, think, like, assistant-type jobs, everybody I know that was in this, is in, like, a powerful position had a job like that. Did that person, did that in, did he mentor you and, like, give you, because no. like, as the intern. You just scared the shit out of me. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, I have to get this done. But as the assistant, <laughs> you're kind of, like, you, you're right there for all of yes. the learning. Well, you see a lot, and you yeah. have to um, know how to speak to people. You have to be able to carry yourself a certain way, and you have to have a little bit of a confidence to you because, you know, these big wigs are coming in, these executives, and you can't look like some meek little woman, you know? Mm -hmm. um, is her microphone okay, or is it my headphones, or is it me? No, I, feel I, like, is it, I feel like I, I'm going in and out, right? Yeah, it's a little closer. Should I come closer here? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, so, I'm sorry, I forgot the question now. No, so he you didn't. you worked for this gentleman, I was kind of yeah. just trying to see, like, did he make an effort to kind of, like, coach you, or did you just sponge up all yeah. the all the knowledge while you were in that position? I'd say sponge. I mean, he was super, super nice man, um, but just, you know, no time. To, it's basically just, like, kind of sink or swim. Here's a, you know, here's an or, just start rowing and figure it out. Um, nobody had time back then. It, it was different, I feel like. You know, now it's there's, um, you know, a career path at, at jobs, and HR is so involved, and you have, you know, every your reviews and that type of stuff. Where It didn't really happen, at least at that job. Mm. Um, you know, it was also a television production company, so it wasn't as corporate. Um, but, yeah, no, I would say I just kind of sponged all that up, and then – they went out of business. Uh, it was the father who started the business, made it really successful for years and years, and then the son, I think, took it over, and I don't know that he wanted to really have that business, so it just shut down, mm. and then I didn't. I was out of a job. Um, and then my husband worked for, um, He's he does like um, IT stuff and um, software programming, all that. So he was working at a company that was on the same level as a documentary company, and he was friendly with them, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, um, National Video Center, whatever, shut down, and um, my wife's out of a job. And I had met the owners of that documentary company that, ironically, they had come for uh, a meeting with my boss, and so I met them, huh. and then I got hired there. <laughs> oh, wow. And then I was off to Peru and Chile and filming stuff with mummies, which was what I had always dreamed of. I mean, oh. when I was a kid, I would watch, like, Discovery Channel and National Geographic, and that was my favorite. Like, my dream was to do a shark documentary. Yeah. Um, still haven't done it, but, <laughs> um, you know, there's still time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we were doing that kind of stuff with mummies and traveling the world, and that was amazing. And what, co like, what was the name of that company? Uh, Angle Brothers. Angle Brothers. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I started working there, like, it was predominantly women, super smart i mean you look at their bios and like i speak swahili and you know just <laughs> really impressive women yeah. uh one came uh, directly from national geographic you know, and they were just really talented women uh, which i thought was great for me at a young age just to see all of these really smart talented women yeah. and learning from them and it was such a small documentary company that you really did everything so when i mentioned i did sound 
the uh, associate producers all had to do sound. And our director was the camera guy. And, you know, we travel. We're all packing up gear. And so you learn so much. That was That's my next question is, like, I'm very intrigued by that world. Like, we, we I have, like, a toe-in. I have a podcast with – I own three cameras. Like, yeah. I'm always interested to know because I have a couple friends in, like, that world in varying levels. And one thing that's always intriguing to me is how the team is put together. So you have, like, this, like, variety of women and, like, the camera guy who's the director mm-hmm. and – what, what, I guess, like, how many people are on a team like that? What are the responsibilities of, like, the given people? Or what were your responsibilities on some, in a well, setting like that? Well, I think from when I was there, it, it has significantly evolved. Uh, but we did everything. I mean, we wrote scripts. We, if I had a shoot in Chile, I was the one calling the government and the office and trying to get permits and permission to film in certain areas. Um, you know, if we had a fixer, I was dealing with them. If we had, were interviewing an archaeologist, I was the one dealing with them, setting up the shoots, finding the stories, you know, researching the mummies. Uh, you really did everything. And then we'd sat, we would sit in with the editors and with our scripts and, you know, go over shots and scripts and start putting together scenes and, and a film. Would you guys work as, like, a group on scripts or were you kind of set up where it's like, Hey, we're going to go, we're going to go to, you know, such and such country. Our goal is to get in touch with somebody who's an expert and get, you know, these shots. Yes. Right. Yeah. Or or do you write the script when you come back from shooting? How much, like, how's that work? When you came back only because you didn't know what you were getting until you investigated the mummy. But you had like a plan. We had a plan. And like a, like, do you have like a, What's it called? Like um, a storyboard of what the goals are? How's that? Um, to some degree, yeah. So ahead of time, like let's say, for example, we went to um, Italy to investigate a mummy. We know the museum. We know the area, right? So we'll start researching the area and how are we putting the story together. We know a little bit about the mummy, what's written about her. So we start. Um, part of the story is we would have our two hosts who were professors at Quinnipiac University, and they would come and investigate this mummy, and they would do – um, an endoscopy and put a camera down there and they try to figure out what maybe sh- was in her DNA or what she ate. And as that information would come out and after we'd come back from the shoot, we knew what kind of shots we had. And we knew from talking to the curator or whoever it was at the museum, we'd start getting notes together and kind of having a story outline. And then we'd come back and we'd go through the footage and then we'd start writing scripts. Damn, so y- you must have shot like a lot of footage and then took what you like the the bulk of it and cut a lot out to make the story yes which is very different than nfl unless you do i guess um you know like a a hard knocks or something where you're just kind of filming and you get what you get type of thing and then it goes back to the editors but a lot of times you already know what your story is like you know who you're interviewing you know what you're doing on that shoot whereas with the other documentaries and the mummies we didn't know what we were getting yet Mm. so we didn't really have a story where it's like oh it turns out, you know, she ate this in her diet, which means they probably lived in this region, which means, you know, they probably, or they died around this time frame. So now we have things to base the story off of and, and kind of retell the story and make it a little bit more um, interesting. But mm-hmm. sometimes you do have a full story of a mummy. There will be like a whole write-up on it. And so you have a, a bigger head start before you go. That's really cool. Yeah. What, um... When you work on a project like that, like on a, say like the Mummy in Italy project, like how many people are on the total team from the production company? I mean, honestly, at that time, not a lot. Like <laughs> it was, five? Um, uh, yeah, probably like three or four and the two hosts. Do you, so you grow really close with those people. Like it's probably really important to like have some sort of, wor- you know, relationship working together as well as like outside. Are you friends with these people still? Yeah, um... I mean, there's no ill, like, no, it's not like we're not friends. Or is it super professional? Yeah, it was kind of like, you know, and you're just really there for your job, and you're doing your job, and you're just getting it done, and um, and then not a lot of downtime. I mean, you can go out for dinner and have drinks, but it's, you know, you're there in long days, and you're trying to get as much as you can, and then you're back, so it's not like, oh, remember that time we partied in Thailand together? (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess in my, my naive mind, it's just like, for someone to put together, that's why I love, like, documentaries, because it's... It, to me, it's someone has to be passionate enough 
about that subject yeah. to go through all of the work yeah. to get all of the people and the camera equipment to like that one spot where the penguin might lay an egg. Oh yeah, and wait and there it's, for and days. wait there, and it's like to find out that person's there just for the business. Like I just. In my mind, I'm like, no, that dude loves penguins. He has a penguin yeah. bedspread, mm. but it does make more. It does make a lot of sense that, like, at a certain point, just making the content the same way it's done today is like a business. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved the story, and yeah, I loved traveling and meeting these people and finding out about this mummy that you know. Are you good at quizzo or like like trivia type stuff? Not really. Really? <laughs> no. I feel like you, you. I feel like my memory sometimes. I'm like, wait, what? Okay. Yeah, because you you probably have such a unique, like you've been exposed to a lot of different information. Yes. Even pre you like yeah like pre the rise of you know YouTube where you can just watch anything for hours. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I forget the data that's in my head. Like. I guess the Chinchero mummies in Chile. They're actually the oldest mummies before Egyptians. We went and did a whole shoot there, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, just it's just a different. It's just different than it is now, and definitely different than what happens at NFL films. Um, it was yeah. more like kind of it was small, right? So it was like everyone grabbed something and you know help Be, out, yeah, and wasn't effort. as you know kind of. Um, I guess uh, they were smaller. They didn't make you know it was a not as um, profitable, <laughs> you know, as the mm-hmm. NFL. So there was, it was kind of like everyone had to lend a hand, which is, I think when you're young and you work at a place like that, you learn so much because yeah, you're, you're doing so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, really it, cool. when I went to NFL films, it's like one person's handling all the stuff that goes in the field and setting up all of, you know, the shoots and talking to all the people in the places. Um, and one person's out in the field directing, one person's here editing. Whereas at the documentary company, we did everything. You know, I'm like I said, I'm calling Chile and saying to the government, like, hey, we're coming into the country and we need da 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 da. And then we're sitting with the editors and we're trying to write the script and then we're trying to deal with the talent. <laughs> and, you know, mm-hmm. it's it was basically everything. And, and I loved that because I, I loved, you know, having a hand in everything. So how long did you do the documentary type production? And then how did you transition from that into um, NFL films? NFL films? So, all right, so I worked there, um, you know, lived in Manhattan with my husband, and then I got pregnant, and the intention was I was going to go back to work, which would have been hard, because at the time, you know, you go on shoots, you go to Peru for two weeks or whatever, and a little hard, I think, with a baby, but that was my intention, you know, new mom, I had no idea what to expect, but then, you know, as time went on, and I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> like this thing's really here. <laughs> I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> like, how am I going to do that? Um, and then, to be honest with you, you know, the minute they handed her to me, I was just like, nope, no. <laughs> yeah. You can tell the mummies they're going to have to wait. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this mummy is yeah. coming first. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and it was a, it was a choice that I made. I, you know, sometimes I think it would have been nice to have have stayed a little bit in it. Um, it's hard, you know, it's hard because you feel torn right you want it you miss your career and that was like my dream job at the time um yeah but being being a mom obviously i'm not a mom and will never be a mom yeah. but having the privilege of like sp- spoken to a lot of moms now it seems um that when you're like bestowed that responsibility in the way um it's in i guess in like in my own naive thinking again it just it just seems like the most important job. And once you kind of realize that you have this life that you're Mm -hmm. responsible for and cultivating, it's kind of just, I watch it happen all the time. It's like, so, so cool to watch. Um, especially a lot of my friends that have kids, like just assume this responsibility and that rise. It just, um, I think it would be very hard for anyone to be like, I'm going to keep doing this and then expect after having a kid that that plan stays the same because yeah. you, there's no way to prepare for that. Yeah, and women have it hard. I mean, you know, I think I give – I work with plenty of, you know, women who had babies at home and were at work, and they do an amazing job at balancing it, and they're amazing moms. Um, and it, But it's hard because you feel guilty, right? Like if you have to leave early, you, leave, you feel guilty at work. But then, you know, when you're not home, you feel guilty. So – and then when you make the choice to stay home, you miss work and you miss, you know – using your brain and, and doing things. And so it's kind of a, a no-win situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but it is worth it. And I think nowadays it's a lot easier for people to do it. Uh, you know, 
um, people are working from home a lot more now. So women have a lot more flexibility and men are, you know, staying at home and staying at home dads are staying at home a couple of days a week and helping out. So yeah, I guess it this, makes a difference. the work from home has um, Game changer. drastically changed the, the working world, yeah. uh, especially for parents. Yep. Yeah. I mean, listen, I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I, like I said, the minute they handed it to me, I was like, there's no way I'm parting with this precious little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have two kids now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there were days my husband would go to work and I'd be crying. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, don't leave me here. What am I going <laughs> to Her have? hands, like, <laughs> on the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, um, you know, and there were moments where I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, I used to be traveling the world and doing all these exciting things. And now I'm like, you know, do I go to Chubb Park? Do I go to Burpee Park? Like, you know. <laughs> um, but at the same time, my kids are now in college and – I'm like, thank God I had that time with them and I cherished every moment with them. And, um, you know, I think they realize that because I'll text them. I've never, I'm like, remember we would (laughs) have a picnic at, you know, (laughs) like at a frat party, like whatever, delete, you know. (laughs) (laughs) No, they cherish it. No, they do. I think they do. Um, Um, So so you had your first and then you were mom. Yep. And then kind of everything in my life, I feel like, I get something in my head. I'm like, oh, I want to, I think that'd be amazing. I, I want to try that. And then somehow the opportunity arises and here I am. Hmm. Um, and kind of like with kids, it was yeah. the same thing. It was like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to have a baby? And yeah. I'm like, oh, we're having a baby. <laughs> um, you know, th- whatever. <laughs> like, I love to roll like that anyway. You know, I feel like sometimes planning puts so much pressure on things. And um, in any event, so one baby and then all of a sudden hey another baby um 14 months later and then Ooh, yeah nice. I, i'm kind of like listen let's just we're, if i'm in it like i'm in it mm. you know i don't want to be partly in it and then i'm kind of out of it and then i gotta go back in it like let's just get this shit done yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know like and all so all or nothing yeah. yeah right if i'm in it like so and it was great because then all at the same time when i was ready to go back to work it was good timing because they were both kind of they're only a year apart you know 14 yeah. months apart so, um, so I stayed home for like a good eight years and then I was like, all right, um, I need to go back to work <laughs> mm-hmm. and not a lot of production companies in, uh, Bucks County, nope. unless you want to do pharma videos, which <laughs> <laughs> I was like mummies or Viagra video. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of pharma here. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, uh, but in any event, NFL films I saw was hiring. So oh, she said pharma, like pharmaceuticals. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, thought that's you what thought, I, said. I thought you meant like pharma, like agriculture. No, there's like a lot of pharma here. Seed videos. <laughs> no, that's not what I thought. <laughs> all right, all you right. gotta wait. Fi- you gotta wait a year. And watch this seed grow, and yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's right. making documentaries on corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's not doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, no. So NFL films was hiring, and uh, I, I didn't know. I mean, I knew football, but I, I didn't really know football. I mean, I didn't. Tom Brady. You know, yeah. Yeah, Eli Manning. Yeah. I don't know, yeah, like a couple names. That yeah. was it. Um, and was this like an on? Like, how did you find out about a job like that? I was just looking, and I saw it on. I saw it online. Uh, yeah. Oh, but before that, I did work on a on a small documentary film, just locally. Um, but so anyway, I found this job, um, interviewed, and they really loved my production background, and thankfully that was strong enough to kind of get me over the hump of not really knowing a lot about football. Um, and so I was hired, and basically, like, we'd be in meetings, and I'd be, like, Googling, like, who is that? <laughs> You know, yeah. like, who's Marshall who? Lynch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, Mike Dicka. Yeah. Um, so you, anyway. You have, like, a, what was that game when we were kids? Guess who? Oh, uh, Clue? Yeah. yeah or, yeah. or where they have, like, the, you have to, like, guess the other person. Oh, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, That's yeah, how yeah. they trained her. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, exactly. Um, but you know what? I But I do love stories, and I do know how to tell a story, and I... Um, and I do know how to obviously set up shoots and I can deal with people and agents and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So all of that came easy to me. What does NFL films do uh, in, in general? Like, what is their responsibility? They do basically all of the filming and programming for the NFLs and for like, and for other things as well. Like the documentaries or like the actual games themselves? Everything. Oh, really? Everything. Yeah. So if so it's coming through a camera, it's handled by them? Well, yeah, I mean, they shoot all the games, um, but... The documentaries, Football Life, uh, Hard Knocks, Presents. I mean, all those shows are So filmed. there's a lot of different projects and things going all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, they they have their hand in basically everything. Um, 
And then before a couple years into it, we actually expanded. I don't know if you knew the um, Payton's Places. Did you guys watch that? Uh, I don't know anything really about football. Oh, okay. If you want to talk yeah. about Paul Kilbert, sure. Well, I didn't see that. No, I didn't see Yeah, that. so they wound up doing like an expansion show of that. So kind of going outside of football a little bit. And we did a show with Ronda Rousey. Um, we did a show with um, Abby Wambach. So basically just being kind of like copying that model of Peyton's Places where he goes around and like talks about the history of football. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Ronda Rousey did that with Judo. Um, fighting. Oh, yeah. Fighting, yeah. Um, and Abby Wambach with soccer, you know, so on. That's cool. Yeah, That's so cool. that was really cool. Um, so what were what were your, like, first set of responsibilities when you got hired at NFL Films? Um, basically, you know, calling up the agents or the um, teams and setting up shoots. Okay. That was basically, you know, right out of the gate what you did. And then things evolved in our department where we started, you know, kind of pitching storylines and then getting more involved and going on shoots um, and just kind of, like, kept growing from there. What was your like most memorable project, or like what like what project did you guys do that you were you were like the biggest fan of or most proud of? Um, I, I have a lot actually. There's, okay. I mean, I will Hit say us. my time at NFL Films. I mean, the experiences I had there, people would only I think dream of, and I'm so grateful for that. The work ethic it also taught me there, which was um, was great. Uh, but we did when the NFL had its 100th anniversary, we did mm. an amazing series where. We interviewed, you know, celebrities, other athletes, fans, um, just about what they love about football. And that was just so exciting because, I mean, people just love to come on and talk about football. Mm -hmm. And just to hear all, I mean, we had Jim Gaffigan, Method Man, um, LeBron James. I mean, everyone came to talk about truly loving football and to watch that and see all the walks of life and um, how this one sport is, you know, like this common thread with all of these different people. That was amazing. Um, That's a, yeah. When you say it like that, that is kind of mm-hmm. the 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 core of all these people yeah. come. Well, you got like Jim Gaffigan and Method Man. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. like you know, it's just it's uh, it was really neat. But we had so many, so many good ones. Who yeah. of like so you've probably interacted with a lot of people um, that are in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Who like who's your most notable like? Or who have you been introduced to, or like who have you been starstruck by, if anyone? Um, I don't normally who is get starstruck. Who's impressive? I guess. Um, starstruck's a weird thing because it's like yeah. I'm the same kind of way where it's like unless you've done something, where I'm like, like who was I? Star- like, like I would Paul be that. Walker, w- Paul Walker when he died, I was pretty sad about that because mm. Fast and the Furious was like our childhood. Mm. But other than that, like, there's very few people where I'm like, oh, like, I've met a lot, I've worked for a lot of, like, celebrities and stuff where it's like, oh, you're just, that's just what you do. Like, you end yeah. up, like, losing yeah. that allure very quickly. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm all, when you, when people work in, like, the position, especially with cameras around, yeah, I feel like you guys get to see how people are. And I was, like, kind of trying to find out, like, who impressed you over the years. Like, oh, that was a cool person. Yeah. Well, um, I think I would be starstruck with Obama, though. <laughs> Obama? Yes. Obama's oh. your guy? Oh, I think I would be like, I'd probably cry. I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I'd lose it. Why, Why of, of all the people, why Obama? Uh, because I feel like he did something. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, he, and I just, I think what he did, you know, for our country and just what he stands for and, and the type of person he is, I think I have such respect for that. Like, regardless of party oh no i'm not i'm yeah. not trying to get it yeah but like, no, no 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 but i, I just think, think i love uh, i i love the fact that he just and not that he's the only president to be like this but i just love that he's so sensible he's so smart but he's so smart that he knows when he doesn't know something and he's not afraid to go and ask who know, like who's better at this than me and who can help me figure this out because i can't and so let me bring in someone who's better than me and i think to me that's so respectable um because a lot of people have egos and they don't like to admit that like, you know what? I'm not really an expert in this area, especially when you're the leader of the country. Um, yeah. What, like, and I what, always just admired that about him. What did he do? Like, what were you impressed with Obama, like policy wise or like what different things like did he do that? Like, you know, you're a fan of, uh, I mean, other than like him just, I'm being afraid there. to say it, but he cares about getting people health care, <laughs> okay. you know, and I, whatever the, however that system works out. I just, I really feel like he had such good intentions for this country and he was such a great communicator and he really, I thought, brought the country together. Very sensible man um, and just 
all around, just I feel like an amazing man. I, I mean, I don't know him, so yeah. but just based on how he carries himself and have you, re- and you I don't want to get into policy because I don't want to be like no, I'm trying the, to avoid. No, like the <laughs> I'm trying to stay on the surface. Like I, I'm yeah. one step away, just be like, because he's handsome. Like I don't want to get into the no, nitty gritty yeah. of politics. This um, is your show. Yes. So yes. nobody is here to argue about what you believe in. Right. Right. But I'm 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 trying to. You know what I mean. Anyway, just, just so say, I she's think like, he hated everybody. He killed him. He killed Osama. <laughs> we got his we ass. Got him. <laughs> he took that dude out. Yeah, yeah. 9-11. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't know which way you were going to. Uh, you were either going <laughs> universal health care or he killed terrorists. <laughs> Obama's got a body count. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he well, took care of terrorism. Yeah, I don't know. He just seems so. Um, He's poised. He has, he has like. When he has he speaks, this elegance to him yeah. and this. Uh, this knowledge about him that I just had such respect for. Did you read his book when he, when he I left did. office? I did. What did you think about that? Um, I only read half of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as with any political book, you yeah, should probably yeah. read half of it to get the gist, and then halfway through, you're like, mm, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm like, I know how this ends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey. um, Yeah, no, but, and I think uh, Tom Hanks, maybe I'd get a little starstruck. I think he's just Tom Hanks, yeah. fun and What's funny. your favorite Tom Hanks movie? Um. Splash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I could have really tripped you up and be like, what's your favorite Obama movie? Yeah, but yeah. you hit um, us with Splash. I'm glad I didn't do that, <laughs> j- the <laughs> shitty joke. Um, we got Splash out yeah. of it. Why Splash of all the movie? Not- I don't know. It's like nostalgic. I was a kid and that oh, came out, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh my God, you know, they're mermaid in New York. <laughs> I'm s- uh, the, move from the movie Big. Yeah, uh, that was a great the, movie. The uh, the machine in that movie, to this day, if I see one of those, I'm like, Alavander's thing. I'm not, <laughs> no business with that machine. I'm not shrinking yeah. down to a child. Yeah. You won't catch me. <laughs> those movies, when we were kids, like, that was everything. Yeah. I mean, Tom Hanks is, he's just, he's. Tom great. Hanks is, yeah. What do you think about his son? Do you know anything about uh, Chet? I don't. He's, he, I, I love him. He's a crazy, he's, he's a, a wild boy, boy but yeah. he's a, he's his own man. Yeah. Despite it, of all the celebrities to have a dad of that level, he is rocking it. Yeah. In yeah. A great <laughs> way. That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's oh. hard to have a dad like Obama or, or a uh, Tom Hanks or, uh, oh, for sure. And to be an actor though, because Tom Hanks, he's just like, he's like Michael Keaton. They have that just little thing about them that only they can do. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and he does look a little bit like his dad. So I almost wondered, you know, if he's on set, is it like, well, you're not doing it like your dad does it, you know, or try not to be like your dad. I don't know. It's it, it would be very weird, I think, for me. What if we could, if, I mean, it would probably be Obama, but what if we could, like, Beetlejuice someone into the room right now to talk to? Would it be Obama? Uh, probably. Obama, Obama, yeah. Obama. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to buy that commercial idea from us, that's okay. It's, it's like we'll, the State Farm We'll make commercial. a commercial. Yeah. No, State Farm um, does that. No, nah, dude, don't take this from me. What? Okay, whatever. We've got a production celebrity here. We've got to <laughs> get her ideas to, Oh, well, here. to answer your question, I will say someone who did, a lot of people are, have impressed me. I mean, just good, kind people. Um in an, you know, in the NFL celebrities, whoever it is. But I remember when Bill Burr came to do an interview. <laughs> okay. um, I, I really liked Bill Burr. I think yeah. he was so funny. Yeah. And I wasn't sure how he was going to be, you know. He couldn't have been nicer, not only to me, but what I loved about him was he literally said hello to every, everyone, every person on set, cameramen, hello, hello, hello. When we were done, he thanked all of them, which I think really means a lot. Because you're paying attention to everybody in the room. And so I had such respect for that when he did that. And Keenan, is it Keenan Thompson, the guy from NFL? I mean, Kenan sorry, Thompson. from SNL. Yeah, Keenan yeah. Thompson. Yeah. yeah. So he was the same way. He mm. went and thanked everyone, said hello to everyone, like the camera guy, the, you know, the, the other guys packing up the lights and everything. And he went over and said thank you. And that means a lot. Yeah. I, I noticed those things. I really like that. You're like a that. cool dude. That says a lot about people. Yeah. That's how you treat the people who really don't, you know, matter in this moment, let's say. Yeah. You know, That's the director is uh, obviously someone who matters in that moment, you know, and but to take your time and go and say hello to everyone else who's there really as like support. Uh, I mean, they all matter. Don't get me wrong. But you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. from a celebrity standpoint, like they don't have to talk to them. We, you under, know? we I fully understand. <laughs> Trust me, nobody. You guys don't matter. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, God, we're going to have a sign now. Production staff matters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our show's not that big, so you won't have to worry Actually, about any protests. we just edit this entire part out. <laughs> I don't need like a sign in my window. Nah, I've said way worse stuff yeah. than this. <laughs> you're fine. You're, you're well within the... Uh, 
I don't know. Com- the, yeah. the, com- the comfortability. I was trying. I was struggling on the political set with Obama. I'm like, what can I say I like about him without getting into no, the nitty gritty of policy? I'm like, the nitty gritty of policy thing is like cert- something I'm struggling with right now because I've gone like, I was very, like, 2020, very argumentative. Then I just got exhausted and then realized there was just no point to it. Mm-hmm. And then um, I read a lot. So I like, I like, I have a lot of opinions. From that, I like history, so, like, history's repeating itself right now, so it's, like, sometimes hard to be like, hey, we've already done this once or twice, mm-hmm. people. And then it's also, um, like, standing for what you believe in is currently, like, my struggle, like, concept, where it's, like, there there are people, I think, that, like, the lawn sign people. There's people that put their lawn signs out, and it's, like, nobody cares what your lawn sign has, and it makes our town kind of look bad right now. But I also think that people should be able to, you know, believe in what they believe in and discuss that. So when people kind of like pull back from the political conversation, mm-hmm. like our show's not really a political show. We tend yeah. to avoid it. But I definitely like hope that someday at least our show or maybe like the community gets back to a place where like, you know, you can say something about Obama and like it be true and me disagree with Obama and that also yeah. be true and everything yeah. to be okay. Cause like, I think right now people are There was are a time scared. when you could do that. You yeah, could have like a educated debate on your policy versus what I believe the policy should be or your yeah. candidate versus my candidate. Unfortunately, it's not like that now. Because I like, I think you're a very intelligent person with like Thank a you. very diverse background and life <laughs> experience. And to watch someone like yourself, like pull back from saying something that you you believe in your heart like you believe obama's a good guy Mm -hmm. he stood on business you think that it's true to his word you know it's how yeah Yeah. you think that like universal health care is important contribution to like our country and you believe it would make it better like you should be able to say that with confidence and like nobody should attack you for that yeah and i think um there was a time when i could i i it's tricky today, and I just, you know, I'm on your podcast, so I don't know. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole that. Yeah, I you res- know. either way, I respect it. Yeah, I yeah. respect your opinion on yeah. the on the guy. I think it's um, it's unfortunate that like politics and stuff like that, um, have have come to the weird thing. And you're obviously not going to be hanging out with the Polish president on Sunday. At the <laughs> <way you> just <laughs> That's wild to me. Yeah. Um, when I found that out this morning, I was like, the Polish president is coming with a Trump. Have you guys ever been there? To Poland? Yeah, no, no, to <laughs> our lady like, of Czech Republic. We, can talk, yeah. we actually, I, I go to the church f- there sometimes. For the first time ever, I've never been inside. Yeah. Um, but for the it's first really nice time ever, I was there for, um, they do the fair every year. Yeah. And my buddy lives like his f- driveway like literally if he drove out of his driveway and didn't turn he would drive into the church oh really so he, right there. so you might want to leave on something <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it i was like what's your plan buddy you might yeah, yeah. you might have to like get food and eggs and water like you might be stuck there yeah dude we, we went there because we heard on sundays they sell the whatever kibasi or the polish sausage you can like Peruvian go down there and yeah kibasi yeah like so we're like yeah let's go yeah. <laughs> so we went down and we ate and you know it was fun. It was an you experience. Go, you go there for a church though sometimes? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Do, are you a religious person? Um, you know, it's interesting because I would say I'm more of a spiritual person. Okay. So, I mean, I grew up with the Catholic religion. That's what I grew up. But I view re- religion as um, almost like our language that we speak to God in. So, you know, you speak Spanish. That's how you communicate. You speak French. Well, you know, you're Buddhist. You're... Hebrew, you're Catholic. That's the way you communicate to God. Is how I look at religion. Um, That's kind of cool. I yeah. like that. Yeah, never well, thought about. That I way. grew up with my mom's best friend is Israeli, and so she was like a second mother to me. So I would go with her to temple. I would, you know, sit with her if her mom came from Israel, sit shiv or whatever it is, or you know, um, I just embraced that religion. We would go there for Passover. They'd come over for Christmas. So I had the benefit of growing up really with two religions um and it being exposed to them and it's a beautiful religion but i grew up catholic and that's how i was taught to communicate to god so yeah, judaism and catholicism like when you really get into like the nuts and bolts of the religions are a lot different but some kind somewhat similar at the same yeah. time i mean if you read between the lines really what is religion i think you know, it's, it's to it's be a good person and yeah. you know live your best 
you know, truest self yeah. and pass and that on. a way to communicate with a higher power that, yeah. again, uh, it's a tool to do that. Do you believe in the law of attraction? Yes. Yeah, because you said a couple of times when we were talking that, like, things just kind of, like, come your way. Yeah, I'm yeah. really big on that. Yeah. Since I was little. I mean, yeah. How about when you took over, like, the design role that you have here? Did that job kind of, like, come into the universe the same kind of way as, like, the rest of the things? Yeah. 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 <laughs> So when um, you when you started working with the team here, like you already kind of had your own little design firm, yeah, on the side. Is it safe to say? Yeah. So I was doing. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, I was doing you know NFL, and then I always loved doing interior design, and so it just started kind of you know getting into it more of like oh this is fun, I enjoy it, I love it. Because you only worked like a part of the year. Yeah, you work. At, I started off working seven months on, and then you're off for five which was great for me when my kids, you know, would be home in the summer or whatever it is. Okay. And so that's just for the NFL schedule for NFL films. That's usually your, you know, typically seasonal. What would like the start of that be? Like what? It what? depends on everyone has different. Time oh, frames. so the whole company is like coming in and out. Correct. Oh, wow. So you guys are like changing the bench like a hockey team. Yes. Right. 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 Wow. I yeah, wonder yeah. what kind, I wonder what like inside at like the leadership level like what kind of challenges you would have like constantly rotating your team in and out like that well it's usually the same team that comes back but it's really about head count okay. nfl films you only get a certain amount of head count actually of having full timers there okay so it's a way of avoiding having that head count because you're seasonal oh. so it actually worked out for me perfectly because like i said i was able to be home with my kids in the summer and then you know go back to work and then i could do some design jobs and then I did go back um, after like five years. I was part time, okay. So I was only part time. So then I could do also design work, and then it just kind of evolved and evolved. And then I started my own thing. And shortly after that, uh, I met John and and Kelly, and it kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, they, had, they have a really good vibe here, so I could see why you know. To me, your personality screams like lone wolf with like her own team in a big design firm. Yeah, but then like. This also is really sweet here. Well, there's a so lot. I yes. Think you've, I think you have like a cool opportunity here to kind of do what you were going to do anyway. Yes. And I think having that support and the knowledge. I mean, you know, I did not go to school for interior design. So to have that knowledge in front of me and learning every day t is so important to me. And that's that was what I was really attracted to here. And just having that um, collaboration between architects and interior design, I've just it's so important to a client, and I think when you're building a home. Um, so it really worked out because I had just kind of started my own lonely wolf type thing, and I reached out to them just being like, hey, I'm a designer. I see you do amazing work. If you need an interior designer, you know, consider me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah, because um, I followed you on Instagram because Instagram's weird, and you follow people you don't even know. Yeah. And then I think – I don't know that I knew that you got hired – there but like i think maybe you came to happy hour i don't know where i met you yeah but i'm like i follow you on instagram yeah, this yeah. is really weird yeah. and then you i think you were just starting to like talk to them maybe yeah so that was really it was really just a small world for me i was like damn all right like I, I thought you had like your pictures and everything were very well curated so thank you i think well, your style's was, nice thank you it was kind of serendipitous because i had reached out and they were looking to kind of grow their interior design firm um, the port that portion of the firm and I was just starting out so I kind of feel like I just got this amazing apartment that I signed a le like a six month lease on you know yeah. and I was like but I can move into this bigger apartment <laughs> with more amenities room yeah. to grow with room to grow yeah. and amenities and you know I'm not really gonna break my lease you know like it's yeah. it's okay um you're kind of taking over the lease next door. Yeah, yeah. right. And so I, so when I came on board, I said, John, I was like, I feel like I gave up, like, my amazing apartment to move in with you, like, move in with <laughs> you guys, you know? Um, but, yeah, so I – and sometimes I think in life when something presents itself to you, even though – because I, was, I wasn't sure, you know, I'm like, do I want to stay a lonely wolf? And um, would it have been a lot harder for me to just kind of, like, get all of this knowledge together in one room? Absolutely. Um but then I think sometimes when opportunities present themselves to you, you got to just go for it and take it. And I would not ha probably have done it if it was for anyone other than John. 
meeting with him, we met several times, just seeing how honest he is and how thorough he is and how much he cares about not only this firm, but the work that comes out of this firm. You know, like I always say to my husband, if I was ever going to build a house, John is the guy I would ha- I would trust to be like, this house will never fall down, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I think to me that meant a lot. Like if I'm going to kind of give up on this, it's got to be for the right guy. No. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's got to be for the right, right um, person, situation. And, you know, along with John, it's, you know, Kelly and the other architects that are here and Caitlin, the other, you know, designer that's here. Um, they all bring so much to the table and I really value them and value their work. Kate, it's just Caitlin's great to my be favorite. Yeah, Caitlin's I don't know what it is about her. Like oh, every she, time I see her, she's got, we just, I don't know. She's we got just, a great personality. Like we're yeah. just, it's just like, I don't know. I've never hung out with Caitlin and not laughed. A, like, oh, had she a has good a great time, personality a good and time. good sense of humor. Yeah. Um, what I knew I was going to like her was she plays music all the time and which I love, mm. but her music selection it's just so on par with what I would pick. I mean, it's all over the place. It's like classic rock. You've got hip hop and then you've got, you know, seven, whatever, eighties, whatever. And I'm like, if she's liking all of this music, we're like, I we're going to be good. Yeah, the ship's we're going to be, be good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are your, now that you've taken over and you're growing the design department here, mm-hmm. what kind of, what kind of goals or aspirations do you have for the firm um, or like the design department specifically? Or like this year, or like in the yeah. years to come. Um, I'd really like us, and and we started to getting a lot more interior design jobs that aren't associated with an architectural job. Okay. So standalone design. Standalone design okay. jobs. I'd love to expand beyond Bucks County. You know, maybe tap into Princeton, or you know, the we beach. are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and just keep kind of growing it and, and building up our clientele, and just putting out really incredible, creative, beautiful work. Do you like what would what was the biggest challenge coming into a place like this that has such a great reputation and a team already in place? Like Mm -hmm. you've done it a few times where you come on and like you you have to show your show your worth, I guess, or like make your spot. Like what was the challenges when like you came on to such a great team? Yeah. um, Well, for one, just, you know, the whole architecture side of things that's new to me. Uh, so just kind of getting familiar with that and how it works and some of the terminology and how they operate and how, you know, they work with the clients and the process of, of all of that. And I think from the interior design part, it's it was probably just the technology. I, you know, I don't do CAD. Um, Caitlin is amazing at it. And I don't do uh, renderings. So those are things that, you know, I'm kind of coming into this where I don't do those things. Um, mine were typically sketches and then you know, all the measurements and everything was just then handed off, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of hand drawn, drawn old school. There's nothing stuff. wrong with that. Wrong with that. No, it, th- it th- works. People did it That's so cool. for yeah. centuries yeah. that way. There's only one set of drawings for city hall. Like, yeah, yeah right, right. True, true. Um, but I, one thing is I'm very resourceful. So yeah. if I don't, if I don't know how to do it, I will find somebody who does and just kind of outsource it. And that's what I kind of was doing. The Obama of design. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an expert in this, but this person is. Um, But to have, you know, Caitlin right next to me and watching her and see her do that, it just gives me more confidence that we're going to give the client the best possible experience. Yeah. Um, Because before, you know, again, like I'm outsourcing it. Here, it's my teammate. You know, we're doing it together, and um, it makes it for a better experience all around. You guys are hiring right now or not hiring? Uh, We're hiring for an architect, yes. Ooh. Gilmore. What? I believe. Uh, <laughs> Talk to Kelly. I don't know. <laughs> no architectural experience. <laughs> uh, yeah. You usually know a guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, Are you an architect? Uh, I have, I'm not licensed. Mm-hmm. So no. We went to school. Don't Did ask you want to be an architect? No. No. Um, I, w- I have a degree in econometrics. I thought I wanted to buy and sell Fortune 50, 500, like big companies. Like I thought I wanted to be Why an did you think investment that? banker. Oh, um, you watched Wolf of Wall Street? No. <laughs> this before Wolf of Wall Street. No, I grew up, um, I had a, I was, ex- I was exposed to a lot growing up and I was exposed to a lot of people mm-hmm. and um, went through a lot. And then when I came out of like that transformation and went to school and like learned what I re- like got in touch with, what do you really like? I like yeah. numbers. I like numbers and I like math. So 
I went to community college and then went to Temple. And it, through that path, I, like, just became an economist. And then, like, I realized I was never going to work in an office a day of my life. <laughs> yeah. And at that time, I was already, I already had a business. We were building, like, decks and doing, like, basements, decks, small remodels, trims, trim like, all the millwork for, like, bigger companies. Mm-hmm. And... I went to Temple like three, four nights a week, eventually graduated and like worked all day long and then would go at night. And then I started building, I was really good at business and like the money side of things. And I started building bigger and bigger things and really felt, I was really young. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of just like, I I always felt like I had big time imposter syndrome. Like I'd be in these projects with like guys that were 20 years older than me, if Mm -hmm. not more. And I was like, damn, like, I don't have any business being here with these guys. Um, So I was like, what do I got to do? And my girlfriend at the time uh, did some research and was like, if you want to be go to architecture, because I was like, I could go for architecture. I could go for engineering. I I, I need something on, on my LinkedIn or resume that says I build big shit. And so <laughs> Boston University is really that, that, like that my ego was just like needed more credit in the building world. Uh huh. Okay. So Boston university had a program and Drexel had a program Mm -hmm. for adults. Otherwise I was going to have to completely stop working and like only do school the way architecture set up. Right. So I went full time at night Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. for five or so years and got through all that. And then just didn't sit, didn't stay for my thesis year. Because at that point, I realized, like, at that point, I was really building some things for some, you know, pretty high-level clients. And just realized, like, damn, the dude in, that's giving me a hard time for walking into class late while I'm soaking wet from rainwater. Mm-hmm. And he makes $63,000 a year. And he's yelling at me for, like, being late about my stupid. Like, just he was, mm-hmm. the, the one individual was just so critical of me. And I was like, dude, like, you've never even built anything outside this classroom. And I said that to him. I was like, because I was close enough in age to him and all the people in this class were like adults. Mm -hmm. I looked at him. I was like, who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not a child here. I have a successful business. Right, right. And then I was like, what am I doing? And I wasn't a quitter. Mm -hmm. So I just felt bad about quitting. And then like through all that going on, I had met my wife. And, you know, one day I was just like, we were dating at the time. I was like, dude, this sucks. Like, and she's like, why don't you just quit? Like, why do you need to do this? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a good answer. So I was just like, all right, that's yeah. that's it. And then I just then just focused on the business and that was twenty sixteen. Mm. So, so so here you are. I really liked architecture. Architecture school was where I found out that like I was an art type person. Before that I was like, dude, art kids, like, nah, <laughs> that's not me. I was always a creative type person mm-hmm. and just never really thought it was okay. And then arts or like architecture school was where I figured out that, like, I was good at photography, that, like, this was, it was, like, being into, like, art wasn't necessarily doing, like, pastel paintings and having blue hair. Right, It was, like, there was more to the world than that, creativity. So I found, like, that's where architecture school was what gave me the ability to, like, like, you don't learn plans or anything like that. Yeah. You learn concepts. Mm-hmm. Like, what what does the room feel like? Mm-hmm. It gave me the ability to kind of, like, like talking in a different language when you're doing, you know, production. Like, mm-hmm. I can speak construction and I can speak design. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that was cool. But it was really just, like, the demanding nature of architecture school is just not, not well, you. Yeah. N- like, the people that went in there were, like, mm-hmm. dude, there was people that were commuting from New York. Like wow. There was a guy, like, there was people commuting. There was a girl from York, PA. Like, there was people every night that we had class. Like, some of these people were driving. I lived yeah. in the city. Right, right. So, I'm like, this is a struggle. Yeah. And I feel bad even complaining about it because all these people right. are They're here in the room are working way harder <laughs> than me. So, I'm just going to shut up and deal yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think sometimes, you know, the trajectory is not always, you know, it's here and there. And you're kind of making your way up there. But I think along the way, you're learning other skills and you're taking those experiences and kind of parlaying them into the next career or job or whatever life experience yeah. you're having, you know? For sure. Um, I don't, I like when the, when I like, f- I like jujitsu or wrestling and I talk to the younger kids now, I'm always like, mm-hmm. get skills. Yeah. Don't worry about like the, I was always so concerned about the finish line or the championship. Right. 
and preparing for the championship that I wasn't really like it wasn't until much later that I realized like all of like the fortunate or misfortunate things no matter what everything served me onto the path that I was like supposed to be on and but back then it was very much like I have to be great and I just have to do all of these things and eventually I'll be there it wasn't like I, I really love to meet young kids now that are like, no, I'm going to go work at this place first and then I'm going to learn all these things and then I'm going to go here. I'm like, well, like if I had thought that way yeah, right. at your age, damn, uh, like yeah. I just worried about You'd be Obama. Massing, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be something. Yeah, I'm kind of the same black. way. I kind of just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd be that cool. <laughs> Obama's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I kind of, that's how I feel like I, when it's, let's say a new challenge or experience is put in front of me. I know if I can or cannot do that just because have I been prepared for this moment? Not maybe on paper exactly that, but all of these other experiences, I know I can pull from those and be able to execute this. Yeah, You always feel like, because when I talk to you, I feel like I'm talking to like a lady version of myself sometimes. Do you always feel like maybe I don't know how to do this, but I can get this done? Yeah. 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 And if I don't, I'll say I don't, I, I can't do that. Like You very much give off that that energy that, yeah. like, if I need something, like, if you needed something done that, like, I was like, I don't know who I would trust yeah. with this. I'd be like, Brigitte <laughs> can figure, figure this out. out. <laughs> like, she knows somebody or can figure this out. Yeah. And I, lo- I love people like that because they make, they make the business happen. Well, if I can't do it, I'll find someone who can. That's basically, it's, you know, being resourceful. Yeah, there's too many, too many folks that want to sit and wait it's like oh i don't know how to do this or i don't know what like this i'm gonna wait for some my boss to tell me yeah and it's like you can't no, i mean i don't life. like to, i have no patience first of all number one <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i something i work on um but life life will go it'll pass you by like to me i'm like if i want to do something i'm going to do it i'm gonna try it i'm gonna you know and to be honest with you, they're all pretty much in the same arena everything yeah. I'm, it's all you know creative stuff that i've always been doing it to your point sitting in front of a desk and pushing papers i just could never do that uh, every job I've ever had has been exciting and creative uh, and you're on the move and mm-hmm. you're f- like kind of building the airplane in the air sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. cause a yeah. lot of times these experiences are new and you got to figure it out and building the uh, airplane in the air. Yeah. yeah. Title. That's a good one. Write it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very true. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. Do you have any wisdom to leave us with? Like anything you were like, this is what I'm going to tell them. Oh, <laughs> sometimes people message us later and they're like, Dave Marcola did that. Shout yeah. out. He was like, I wish I said this. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, we'll have to have you on. I know later <laughs> in the bathroom mirror and I'm like, oh, I didn't say that. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always like when I get in an argument with someone, I'm like, you, late, he's the, oh, yeah, he's like, the victim said of it. Ariel or Gilmar is usually the victim. Where I'm like, <laughs> I got to fight Gilmar and I should have said this, but I'm going to tell you now. About <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gilmar's I like, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone does that. Like, you drive home and you're on the car ride home. You're like, yeah, I should have said this, and I could have said that, and I'm saying it now (laughs) (laughs) to no one. Uh, No, I just think, you know, to me, I think don't let things go by. Don't wait for the perfect moment because it'll never come. The moment is now. Go do it, whatever it is you want to (laughs) do. The moment is now is also a pretty awesome. good place. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Give me one. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for sitting down and yeah. Yeah, talking thank you. with us.